mainly butter on the front. I'll tell you what, if it's laying down flat, it'll work better. Yeah. yeah. Using a regular axe much like they would have used a broad axe and they would have used a broad axe normally to, uh, to hew or square a log but what he's doing is taking short cuts so that it'll split off and because of the, uh, the nature of this wood it makes it a lot harder than if he was doing this with a moke log or a popper log. See, see the short chops and how because you can't control a long split using the shoulder is working for you. If it goes outside, I'll try to use the ads and see if I can get it to go down the uh, down the sides the other way. We'll actually be looking across the green. You can notice the guide cut that you see, and that's to keep the so we can maintain a uniform thickness of the log. This was actually a, uh, a flooring edge. This part was used to set nails in the floor. This was originally flat. I rounded it, uh, and when it's in the rounded configuration, they usually refer to it as a guttering edge. And I don't know exactly what they always use them for. I use them for working out air seats, but. Uh, You don't really want to hit it like that, like, like a beaver's chopping at it yeah. with his teeth. You want to be more so that the bit of the ads or the blade of the ads is more parallel to your surface. Okay. So when I hit like this, even though I'm going through sometimes, You're shaving. I, I'm shaving it. And because of the, the tankerous nature of this, if it doesn't, so we can always change directions and cut what you chipped up. See, if you get a chip going, a lot of times then you can sling it and it'll go right through. Right. And if you straddle this, you can't hit yourself. Well, it's, a, it's a good thing. You can see that even though the grain looks straight, when you split it, it doesn't split straight. The oak, on the other hand, it split almost like it was sawed with a saw. You can see it split, it ran perfectly with the grain where it's What I'm trying to do now is just use a quarter of this radius and I'm gonna take diagonal chops because of the nature of that grain and hopefully I can knock some of that edge off and we'll start to get the round shape that we're looking for. The short stop cuts are allowing it, it's controlling the splitting a lot better. So I can hit a piece and just knock a short piece off without running the risk of it splitting deep into the log. That's the idea of it. You can see that the one in my right hand is actually just a little tighter radius than the one in the left. And a lot of times that allows a better cut because the tighter U-shaped radius will focus on a smaller piece of the wood. Maybe faster than I don't know. Uh -huh. that, that looks like that may be actually faster. Is that your grandfather's axe? Yeah. About how old is it? Well, he died in 1960 and he was 77, so. It's probably made in the 20s. So you still do math in school, Sandy, so.
that's good. That's real good. That's pretty close to how it's supposed to work. You take a base hit, not a home run. Right. You shouldn't have to really swing it that hard. And if it's going parallel when it cuts, it'll be just like a real fast plane. See if I can just get that bottom worked out a little bit. This is like a duck. Once you get started on it, it's different. Yep. Right? And you want to stay the way it's going to look like, right? Yep. get it opened up, you can begin to use your tools. When it's tight, you don't have any room to work. Right. That makes it a lot harder. That's big enough to put a baby in. Mm-hmm, it's getting there.